year grad student in EECS. Hi, I'm Marlies and I'm a second year. I'm Maz and I'm a third year. I'm Jessica. I'm Mark. I'm Sarah and I'm a first year. We are here to talk to you about choosing an advisor. Why? Because in addition to your success as a grad student, we care about your happiness and well-being along the way. Research shows that your relationship with your advisor is often the biggest factor in determining a positive or negative grad school experience. And we've personally seen this go both ways. Here at MIT, but also for friends at other schools. When you choose an advisor, you're not just choosing a name in a field. You're also choosing a mentor, a set of expectations, a work environment, lab mates. For the next five or so years. And after that, it's your research advisor who will help you launch your career. It's a big deal. But the good news is you get to choose. So where should you start? One of the most important things you should consider is mentorship. Everyone needs technical and career mentorship, no matter how experienced you are when you come in. With good mentorship, you will probably be able to get things done much faster. And you will be much better at what you do by the time you leave grad school. Now we want to warn you that the terms hands-on and hands-off are often not good indicators of mentorship. Instead, we suggest figuring out where your primary source of mentorship will come from. If you join a certain research group, who will be your primary source of mentorship? Your advisor, a postdoc, a senior PhD student. Do you feel motivated by that person, whoever it is? Do you think you would bounce off of each other well when solving problems? And what can you expect from them in terms of time and expertise? Do you feel like you'll be able to seek their guidance when you need it? Or will you be spinning your wheels a lot trying to figure things out on your own? Another important thing for you to consider before joining a lab is the work environment. Everyone deserves to work in a positive environment conducive to their success. You can get a sense of the work environment by talking to or observing an advisor's students. When you meet with an advisor, ask them to connect you with one of their current students. Go talk with that student or other students in the office or lab. Ask them about the culture of the group and how that has affected their experience. Ask them about how the group's size and demographics affect things. Ask them about how many hours per week they work or if they work on weekends. Ask them if students in their group tend to be more collaborative or competitive. Ask them how much they interact with other lab mates during the day. Or if they spend time with lab mates socially outside of work. And finally, try to get a sense of how happy they are. The third aspect to consider before joining a lab are how the advisor's policies and expectations may affect things that are important to you. These may include specific work hours to be in the lab or office. Or how often you can expect individual or group meetings. Or how students are usually funded. Or how the advisor feels about conferences, publications, extra classes, extracurricular activities, internships, vacation time. Or requirements for letting a student graduate. Every advisor is different and you want to make sure your interests align. Final note, remember that you need an advisor, but the advisors also need you. Advisors are competing for you, just like you're competing for them. So the interview process goes both ways. If you have any questions or problems, don't hesitate to reach out to the EECS graduate office. In fact, the sooner the better with that. Making the graduate student work environment as good as it can be is a priority of MIT's administration. We're excited you're here and we hope this information has been helpful to you. Whether you choose to make MIT your home or somewhere else, we wish you the best of luck. 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 Best of luck, best of luck in graduate school.